My guest today is an artist through and through and calls herself a bag customizer, muralist, and artaholic. She doesn't consider herself an entrepreneur, but I do. She's found a way to make her passion work for her customers, create great content online, and everyone's trying to copy her style. Janan Shaheda is the creator of Janan Studio. From the moment you walk into her house, you'll feel like you're sitting in an exclusive art gallery in LA or New York. High ceilings, beautiful artwork on the walls, even her dining chairs and mug coasters were a piece of art. Nestled in the corner by the window was her studio, where all the magic happens. We grabbed some matcha and chatted on her couch. So the reason why I work from home is because when I first got married, I didn't work from home, and my husband could never, ever find me. Really? Because when I paint, I just, I lose sense of time. Okay. So then uh, Omar built me a studio and said... In the house? Yeah, we, the roof, literally. I had a huge space. Okay. So he's like, you know, I don't care. You know, <laughs> I need to find you. You need to go. So this is how I it got started. used to working at home. Plus, I'm around my kids. I can paint these anywhere. I just need that. I'm fine. And I travel with that with me and I'm going, I'm going to work in LA now. And there's a place called Spring something in Beverly Hills where it's a really cool pop-up. So I'm going to be part of that. Yeah, I saw you do a couple pop-up at the Mall of the Emirates for Fashion Week. I did that with Harper's Bazaar, yeah. With Harper's Bazaar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, was it like being in a fishbowl, having people watch you do your job in a mall? Yeah, it was, it was yeah. It was a little bit awkward. It was a bit, yeah. I end up not painting, I'm just chatting with everyone. So my experience of creating the artwork for the G-Wagon was literally I just sat and I just had a vision and I started sketching it and then I and I created an optical illusion design as the base of the car and it's a very special design to me because I had used it in a, a furniture piece that I love. It's one of my favorite pieces and we used it for that. This artwork for the G-Wagon was such a big challenge to me. I was both honored, thrilled and terrified all together, which just stirred up my passion to make it an eye-popping design that couldn't help be noticed, which I think I've achieved. And honestly, I can't wait to drive this car around Dubai. Janan's main work currently is personalizing luxury handbags and bespoke items. She showed us some of the work she's doing, designing initials on a wallet, LV bags with butterflies, Oh, I could just go on forever. I used to paint buildings and walls. Okay. And uh, I did that for a long time. And now I paint on bags because it's the, it's the business of now. It's what's calling me. My big love is walls and ceilings and buildings. That's actually what I love to do the most. Really? Yeah. And how long have you been painting for? Oh, God. Years. <laughs> I'll say it for the Okay, a long time. You've been painting a long time, but like, how did it come to you to paint on handbags? My friend uh, dropped espresso on her bag. This is like, we're talking about maybe 16, 17 years ago. But I, I didn't think of it as an idea um, at all. I just, uh, I mean, we fixed her bag. We painted this geisha woman because I had to cover the black espresso stain. And people loved it, everything, but never had time to do this as a, as a business because I was busy doing homes. I did furniture. I did bespoke paintings and candles. I mean, I had a lot of businesses in uh, Cairo. And then when I came here, I was here and I was like, what am I going to do here? Like, yeah. I don't have my staff. I don't have the people who know me. Like, so then a friend of mine wanted me to paint on her bag. She was, you know, talking about it for a really long time. And then when I came to Dubai, she said, okay, you have time now. You have time now. But the other thing is a friend of mine in London had the third largest vintage store. And I was like, listen, you got all these bags you can't sell. Chanel's, LV's that people don't want. And they were kind of odd shaped, like round Chanel's or, yeah. or you know, this. And I said, give them to me. Let's paint them. Jazz them up. Jazz them up. And then, and then Harvey Nichols bought the entire collection. Wow. So we did that for like six years. Oh, wow. So they'd send me, uh, my God, two Christmas ago, they sent me 80 bags. Harvey paint. Nichols would send you bags to paint? Yeah, every month. And you would ship them back to London? Yeah, so they'd be sold painted. It's not customized. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. it's already painted. Yeah. yeah. Whereas what I do here, these are customized, customized pieces, pieces. For what customers want. But how did you get into putting them on social media and sharing your work and, like, taking photography, writing copy? Like, now you have a business. Kind of, yeah. How, how do the you do The thing that was difficult was me sharing my techniques because what happened was I have these... Uh, so I have now around eight to 10 artists uh, around the world who take lessons from me. So they send me their work every day. So what's funny is the- is I didn't the, know this. I mean, I spend at least two, three hours a day just answering. Coaching people. Yes. So a lot of people are against me. They're like, why are you showing your techniques online? Why are you giving away your secrets? And it's funny because um, it's like anti team. I, I don't know, I might be wrong, but I mean, for me, I just, I film how I paint. 
And some find that, I don't know. First of all, I, I, I find it therapeutic. I like watching you paint. Mm. It's just interesting to see like where the canvas and where the art is going. Secondly, you know, this is something that um, a lot of business people talk about. Give out your craft for free. Share, share, share. Yeah. Like that is something that is in and it's something that a lot of people believe in. So I think that's a good thing that you're doing. I that. think it's good. It's funny how you, some some people are like, why are you doing that? Why are you, you know, but and the reason why I do lengthy videos is because I will get a message saying, oh, when you did the brush that way, which brush did you use? Which, so I'm, I am coaching. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You're an expert in your field. You should share your craft. <clears throat> I'm sharing it. So I don't know if that's going to backfire or not. But No, I mean, it's not. Yeah? I definitely I think, don't think I mean, it's... so far it's been good. I want to know, do you film while you're painting? Yes. Like I film when I bike. <laughs> the one hand theory. <laughs> what is it about painting that makes you happy? Oh, my God. I just, I, I just go into another world. I really do. You know what's funny is that when I'm not painting, I mean, Joy, my cousin, always complains to me about I'm the most impatient person. Really? So it calms you? No, I just don't have tolerance because I put all of that into my painting. So yeah, I could be painting. painting eight, nine hours. I'm extremely patient. The minute I finish, I want to get up. I want to go work out. I want to go meet, you know, friends, do, whatever. do whatever. Yeah, but even the friends I meet, it's got to be worth it. Like I will not have to, uh, if I go to a lunch and it's silly and the women are talking about silly things, I'll just leave. Yeah, I don't have good. time for that. Yeah, it's, it's good. Leave, I don't leave know if it's good, purpose. but I just, I don't have patience. What has this taught you about dealing with customer service and customer experience and customers? To be honest, I've been lucky. You haven't had any difficult customers? Here, no. In Egypt, yes. Not here. Where they don't like it or they want to change something? I've had some that wanted to change something, yeah. But we change it. It's fine. It's It's undoable? No, I cannot remove what I painted, but I can add on it. Like, I can't remove that horse. If I remove that horse, it'll be damaged. The leather underneath it will be da would be damaged. But I can add to it a saddle. Do you know, see what I'm saying? Oh, I get it. I get yeah, it. Yeah, so it's it. things like that. So. I get it. And who takes your photography? Like, who takes those pictures? Me. They're not good. Are they good? Yeah, they're, they're really, really good. Yeah, they're I was really like, good. you have a studio? No. I take the dust. They're like on a white background and everything. Well, not really, yeah. That's what entrepreneurs do. That's what people do on social media that have businesses. Yeah, I guess so. Do you think about um, how you can scale this as a business? I do think about it. I'm not good at it. I'd like to find someone who can help me, but um, I, I can't do all of that. I'm just not. I'm just not naturally good at it. I'm just good at painting. I know, but, but how how would you scale it when it's just you that paints? If I have the well, I can scale it. I can train I can, teams to of course point paint. Yeah. And run a small studio. Yeah, in, in Egypt, I had I had around 17 people staff full time. Really? Yeah. But you were painting walls and artwork, not I had bags. Yeah, I'd do five to seven projects, homes uh, a month on average. And I also had a furniture line and I had a candle line and I had uh, I had the fine art line for. Um, so I worked with a lot of decorators for clients who couldn't find paintings in in galleries. For their homes, like for they want homes. something custom for their homes. Oh my homes. God, that was such a big business. And all the guys were really pissed off. So it'd be like, okay, since you're so famous in that, yeah, in the bespoke, uh, so come and do an exhibit exhibit with us, the galleries would say. But then I was like, I can't do. And this is an interesting point because when you want to do an exhibit exhibition, they'll take from you 40 pieces, let's say 40 paintings around a common theme. Whereas what I do is I... They're all different. They're all different and they're all bespoke. So this, so Kenny again will come to me and say, listen, we've got a three meter couch mm. in this flat in Greece mm. and we need a really long painting with the colors that will complement this room, this room. They can't find that in a gallery. So you make it. Oh yeah. That was a very big business. Actually, and that's something I could easily go back to. Like I've done two flats here in Burj Khalifa and I'm doing this house now in, uh, in the Bulgari uh, mansion, but I only took these because they were inspiring projects. Because I don't have time to do this and that. Yeah. It's either this or that, you know? What do you mean by inspiring projects? The house in Bulgari, it's a cool wall and the colors are, uh, like I just, I could, I could see what I was going to do and I, I know it's going to look really nice, so I'm inspired to do it. But like I went to once this house where she wanted uh, golden squiggles on the ceiling. I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I can get someone to do that. I'm sorry. I'm not doing squiggles. <laughs> squiggles are not for me. Yep. Me and squiggles. <laughs> Don't match. 
So I know what you're wondering because it's what I'm wondering. What is the process to decide what actually goes on the bag? So I'll tell you a funny story. So I go and meet this really, really incredibly sweet lady with the sweetest voice and um, just a wonderful person. And she and she's angelic, literally. So I sit with her and she's got, she's got this beautiful long hair. She has a headband on. She's wearing Chanel flats and she's wearing a white Birkin and she's wearing a white lacy dress. So, of course, you know, you make your first impressions the first few seconds. So yeah. I'm thinking, Laura Ashley, she wants birds, butterflies. You know, Max, you know, this is, you know, we're going definitely floral. Flor- and she sits with me with a sweet voice and she asks for the finger. Really? So you've got these funny stories. <laughs> this does not that fit with that. Fit with that. She's like, I am so suppressed. I just need to express myself. To express myself. So I want this finger on my bag. So she, so we, 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 we painted a bag where the Louis Vuitton was bursting open and this finger was coming up <laughs> and it was her hand. And when I posted the picture, I said, you know, I'm not going to put her name because I'm sure she wouldn't want her name. She, she's like, this is my, this bag. Is my so she, she wants, wants you've got these funny uh, reflections. So you painted some bags for some pretty famous people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some famous people. Yeah, like, you know, some Egyptian footballer who plays for Liverpool. Oh, yeah. Heard of him. <laughs> Tell Salah. me about that. Oh, my God. He's so cute. That Tell was me fun. about that. That was fun. So that was, uh, yeah, that was through his trainer, Ali Mazhar. Do you know Ali Mazhar? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so it was through him. And then I finally met him here, and he was just so sweet. Like, he was such a... He asked for a designer. Are you someone who's giving it as a gift for him? So... Or? Actually, Ali Ali said that was his favorite trophy. So I did the golden boots. Yeah. And uh, he loves it. And when, when I met him, he's like, I, it's my fa- I just love that bag. It was just so, so it was, it was fun. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was the really initials nice. and the yeah. golden boots. But you see someone like him cannot post it for me. Yeah, yeah. Even though he would catapult my career from this to yeah, yeah. talk about scale. Yeah, yeah. But he can't. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> Tell me who else you painted. I saw some actors, some leather jackets you did. So I did for Queen Rania. Oh, what did you make for Queen? I Rania? did for her a uh, really nice butterfly bag. Oh, nice! Yeah, it was really nice. Couldn't ask her to. Post but she's it a either. close friend of yours. She is. Yeah, she is. So that helped. Yeah. Um, what else I did for Vanessa Williams? Oh, nice. Um, I did for like all the Egyptian, like Mona Zaki Yosra. And, I've seen all the Egyptian yeah, actors. Yeah, Hen Sabri. Done. You did a leather jacket for Amr Youssef. Yes, I did a jacket for Amr Youssef, and then yeah. What's the weirdest thing you got asked to paint? The finger. Your work is storytelling. You're telling a story yeah. through your bags mm-hmm. and through your art. What kind of stories have you told or do you think you want to tell in the future through your art? I, I Honestly, I, I'm so much into sustainable, sustainable living now. I mean, just to raise awareness about the amount of... I mean, if I could find a way, even though I'm painting on leather, if you think about it, it's controversial. But that's something I'm very interested in. So I want to get some savvy advice. Okay. Advice for anyone who wants to take their passion. This is a hobby for you at first. I mean, before the bags work, because yeah. you used to paint murals and real art and major things. Yeah. Turning their passion into a business. Mm-hmm. What would you advise? Okay, I'm not the right one to ask because I'm not good at business. You're not good at business. No. But some people aren't good at business. Some no, people but I want to hire at... someone who can do the business side because I'm actually not good at it. Yeah. yeah but I'm you're actually... good at the creative part. Some people are creative and some people are analytical. You know how an agent comes and finds someone creative and like you just do this, here's your orders and deal with it? Yeah. I want someone like that. Okay. I can't deal with that. Like I want to go, let's say I've got clients in Singapore. They're like, okay. come, 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 please come. Yes. Okay. But I can't organize where I'm going to show. What I need someone to... To do all of that. To let, listen, this is a cool concept store and... Come to me and it's really funny. Last time I went to Singapore, I got walked into a shop called Um Pedro and I saw a bag of mine being sold for twelve thousand dollars. Wow. And I know that. That's you know not... what you painted? Do you initial your stuff? Yes. It was oh. my bag. And I'm like, why are you selling it? Are you crazy? Like that's that's a crazy amount. And he's like, that's the market price there. So anyway, let's say if I were to go to Asia, for example, you know, I need mm-hmm. someone to set up that. I can't do all of that. I don't have time. You don't want to do mm-hmm. direct to consumer e commerce? Like set up a proper shop where you have your things online, sell direct to consumer. If How you... would that work with someone who has a bag they want to paint to me? They want to send it to me. No, to like paint. the thing, sort of like what you do with Harvey Nichols, where you can produce a, like a, like a season of bags. It's a concept. It's an idea. Well, I did that with Harvey, and it did work very well. I don't know. I guess I, I would need much more people to do that.
I think Janan is both an artist and an entrepreneur and has carved this niche for herself that has others attempting to emulate her work. But trust me, she's the original. And you can feel that when you're talking to her or watching her videos as she tells visual stories and brings people's personalities to life through art. And then this lady, these are her horses. So she sends me pictures of her horses. Oh, her actual horses? Yeah. So these are some of the bags that you finished? Okay. That's my friend from Turkey. She's, um, so it's all personalized. She's a scorpion. This is her initials. She likes the hand of Fatma. It made me think, if I were to get a bag, what would I paint on it? What would be your story? Janan is going to be hosting a pop-up in July and August in Venice in Los Angeles, California. You can find out more information by DMing her on Instagram at Janan Studio, J-A-N-A-N Studio.